Welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. We are back with another lab. This lab is about the properties of gases. I've got Isla here helping me. Hi. Chrisette. Hey. And Lael. Hi. So make sure you have supplies, something to write with, something to write on. You're going to be making predictions, thinking about different gas laws that you're observing. So make sure you've got your supplies and meet us right back. And let's get started. Record the mass of the balloon. Inflate the balloon and tie the end. Place the inflated balloon on the balance. Use a piece of tape to hold it in place. We're going to be measuring little Jimmy. His mass. His mass. 2.88. Now we're going to be blowing up little Jimmy too. Three point one seven. Stop. Remove the balloon from the balance using a pin to gently puncture the balloon near the neck and release some gas contained in it. Do not pop the balloon. Place the deflated balloon on the balance with the tape still attached and record its mass. Predict how the mass will respond. Make, oh, oh. Make a guess of how many milliliters of liquid would fill up the balloon to the same size. It's just a guess. Any number will do. Determine how many moles of gas that volume would contain, assuming standard temperature and pressure. Y'all remember, one mole equals 22.4 liters of gas. Insert the rounded end of an unused balloon part way into an empty soft drink bottle. Blow up the balloon so that it fills the bottle. Predict how the balloon will respond. Okay. Try to move your finger your fingers from in front of the bottle. Try again, Ella, or do you want me to wipe that off? Just keep going. Mm-hmm. It's hard, guys. Yeah, it's very hard. Have you ever gotten it to blow up like really big, like inside the? Oh, that's good. So you can. Mm -hmm. Why? Yeah. Here, mm. show it towards Chrisette like this, like a trumpet, so we can see it from there. You go. Okay. <laughs> Why do you suppose you were unable to inflate the balloon inside of the bottle? Locate the plastic bottle with a small hole in its side. Cover the hole in the side of the bottle with your finger. Fill the bottle with water. Replace the cap tightly. Holding the bottle over a sink, remove your finger from the hole. Still holding the bottle over a sink, remove the cap. Predict how the water will respond with the cap on and with the cap off. What is it? Angle it towards the sink to where it looks like it's peeing to the sink. But no, oh, that's too far. Angle it towards me a little bit more. Okay, now put, really close bad. it back on. Hold up, hold it, hold your, hold your horses. <laughs> And I'm just gonna squeeze it. Okay. 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 Now, undo it again and let it run do a little bit more, and then put it back on. Chrisette, get your hand out of it. Mm -hmm. It looks like a rain dropper. Looks like pee. No, it doesn't. Pee. Okay. okay. Hypothesize why water is able to flow from the hole in the bottle only when the top is unscrewed. Place about 10 milliliters of water in a clean, empty aluminum soft drink can. Using beaker tongs, heat the can over a Bunsen burner until the water turns to steam. Quickly plunge the can's mouth down into a container of ice cold water. Predict how the can will respond.
Describe the air particles, number, motion, speed, etc., inside the can before you heated it, while you were heating it, and after you submerged it in the ice water. How is temperature related to the speed of the molecules, and the speed of the molecules and the speed of diffusion? Stretch the neck of two balloons over the mouths of two test tubes. Place one test tube inside of a beaker of hot water and observe the balloon. Place the other test tube in a beaker of ice water and observe the balloon. Predict how the balloons will respond to the temperature change. One, two, three. Go. Let me see. Leo's is shrinking. Is it? That would have more air. This one's losing air. I think that's kind of cool, actually. It's just like that. There you go. Science rules. Yeah, that, that's kind of cool. It's like in the pro museum. Like when you volunteer for like the balloon thing, it's like shrunk when they try ice. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> it's gonna pop. <laughs> the bottom of the test tube. Use your knowledge of the kinetic molecular theory to explain the behavior of each balloon. Draw back the syringe to the 10 milliliter mark. Record the pressure. Press the syringe to the 5 milliliter mark and record the pressure. What do you suppose would happen to the pressure if you have decreased the volume to 2.5 milliliters? What about increasing the volume to 20 milliliters? How is pressure and volume related? Google the air pressure in your hometown. Figure out the temperature wherever you're at, and if you don't know the temperature inside, then look to see what the outside temperature is. Determine the number of moles in that 10 milliliter sample. Look at the Cartesian diver in the two liter bottle. Pay close attention to the level of water inside of the dropper. Squeeze the sides of the bottle. Predict how the diver will respond. Okay. That's actually cool. That's really cool. Your turn. Why does it sink? Because you're putting pressure on it. That's true. Good job, Leo. You're being smart. Okay, here you go, Leo. You don't have to squish it hard. It what happens if you do it upside down? Same thing will happen. I'm screwed up. <laughs> That's actually cool. <laughs> that is cool. Why does it do that? The pressure. Oh, yeah. Oh, I already answered that question. Pressure. How do you explain the change in the water level inside the Cartesian diver? You've been answering my post lab questions all along. I've been putting them with each station, but I've got a couple more here. Choose one of the experiments and explain how it's useful in demonstrating that air is matter. Number two, choose an experiment or a life experience and explain how it is useful in demonstrating that air exerts pressure. I hope you enjoyed exploring some properties of gases. Until next time, bye y'all.